question. A uh, quick backdrop, we kind of picked this topic, um, maybe th we think because part of it's pretty neat. The other reason is <clears throat> I think part of the origins of this uh, Yellow Leaders Forum came out of a city schools partnership, uh, which is continuing that we're um, trying to develop both in the region and certainly in Woodland. We have a very active uh, partnership that we're hoping to continue to build on with the city, the school district, and our uh, community college partners. Um, the other backdrop to this is the budget and economic crisis that everyone was dealing with and some of us are still wrestling with. Uh, in Woodland in particular, in two 2010, the um, voters had approved a quarter cent sales tax measure. It was really a one-time stopgap measure for a four-year term, uh, A, to help some draconian uh, budget cuts on the heels of years and years of cuts. We would have seen more law enforcement officers um, reduce, we would have had uh, closures of the city library, um, and just really draconian. So the uh, leaders in, in Woodland the community before I arrived had the uh, wherewithal to have a measure adopted that would provide for additional time. I show up in Woodland and, and part of the task was to help um, get the city's budget back um, on an even keel so that this measure could expire without ongoing reliance on it. Um, at the same time, we're having our, uh, we have a three by two by two process where the city meets with the school district and the college reps and kind of keep up on what everybody's doing. And about that time, uh, the school district uh, was presenting some, some data to us. I think this is 2013 test results. First, the state physical fitness test data. Um, and there's always sort of a positive spin on this, but what we're seeing is in fifth, seventh, and ninth grade, uh, students in the Woodland School District uh, falling well below uh, state standards for health and fitness. A couple more months go by, a couple more two by twos, three by twos. Oh, here comes the STAR test where third, fourth, and ninth graders, uh, this is the English uh, achievement, um, are lagging and in some cases having a hard time moving up that curve. So it led to a really interesting discussion. The punchline was, um, you know, you can talk about the school, you can beat up the school's districts all you want. The reality is this is not a school problem, it's a community problem, and what is it that the city can do, what is it that a community can do together? Going back to the budget situation, we had that expiring uh, tax, we were doing well on the budget, we said, you know what, going forward, the city budget doesn't need the tax measure, but, um, you know, what kind of community do we want to see in Woodland, and what would be the priorities to be able to reinvest those dollars in, uh, in the community. So in not very innovative fashion, oh, we have to form a subcommittee and we get stakeholders together um, and we start talking about how to reposition this thing. What was innovative, at least for me, that's been doing this for about 15 years is uh, we decided, A, that we weren't gonna come up with a laundry list of programs and a budget to present to the voters. We also weren't gonna try to do another uh, three or four year tax measure, which just leaves you hanging four years out. So we came up with the idea to do an eight-year um, renewal measure targeting on youth. And then we'll see, as was said earlier, without a, a product at the end, we were just to say, let's get a resource, let's get the conversation going. We figured if we can get an eight-year tax measure passed, how can we invest in the third and fourth graders of today so that by the time they graduate high school, we can have a positive impact on those indicators. This was kind of the coolest thing. We had a very low uh, under the radar campaign, no opposition. Uh, what's important to me is not that we got 68.6% .6 of the vote, but that every precinct in the city um, supported the measure. And so on the one hand, this was great. On the other hand, we said, shoot, now we actually have to deliver on, on the promise. But that's actually kind of the, the cool part and the innovative part. So we've been partnering. Um, internally uh, within the city, across departments, with the school districts, other community stakeholders, and have in, in the first year of implementing uh, uh, expanded breadth of uh, sports programs, recreation programs, uh, we're bringing the literacy program, we've expanded the hours at the library. The other cool thing for me as city manager is our library director and our community services director are now talking and working together so that we're combining programs, what a concept. Uh, we've also brought programs into the school this year in the middle schools on a um, lunchtime and after school and we're expanding it to the other middle schools. Uh, we just uh, allocated some funding for an additional school resource officer uh, who's in the elementary schools doing gang uh, intervention and reduction training. Um, 
Uh, there's a uh, crime prevention element. Uh, there's some excitement among our rank and file and uh, police union to restart a police activities league. I said, hey, if you need some resources, we have a pot of money that we can do. So we're using this money to seed, to leverage. $2 million is not a lot of money when you're trying to deal with those indicators, but if we find the right places to invest, the right places to leverage, um, um, we can make a difference. And uh, finally, one of the things I'll say that is a little bit innovative, Next year, we hope to establish this Youth Advisory Council of actually youth and teens to help us decide whether we're spending the money in the right place, maybe even allocate some money for them to um, decide what to do with, and that's the youth engagement component. Thank you so much.